when I was younger, I was hoping and praying that I could learn music and guitar in, in a way like there's a formula. You know, this is the right way. That's the wrong one. This is the right way. Everything is the, this goes here and that goes there and everything fits the square in the square and the circle in the circle. And it was just not the case. It was the exact opposite every year. I turn around and go, oh, that doesn't do it. Okay. So uh, I was not only lucky to have one great teacher, but to have two in my lifetime. I, and I don't mean great. I mean incredible teachers that had the patience not only to teach me, but all their students throughout their life from different angles, talking about the same topic from different viewpoints. And uh, that saved my life, and I know it saved, you know, musical life, say, and saved thousands of students as well that don't, couldn't just learn something just because there was a rule that was made up a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. So uh, I am bringing this up because I'm going to present to you the, uh, the good point about melodic minor and then the very negative points about melodic minor in terms of improvisation on the guitar and hope that you will say, okay, there isn't just one way to learn something or to do something. There, here is an option. And this option is not something I created yesterday. I created it over 40 years ago and can say I have hundreds, if not thousands, of students who have gone through this and successfully and see that the approach is, I'll just use the word, superior to anything else they saw or and, and anything that seems to be out even to this day. It's still cutting edge as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so melodic minor is a great scale. We oh, Now we know there's four chord types in minor that come from that scale, that scale source. And that's the two chord and two different five chords, two different dominant chords, and the one chord in minor. So I'm sure you've heard this sound. Okay, so there's two, five, one uh, in minor. The melodic minor scale has been around hundreds of years. I have no idea when it was created. Let's just agree on one thing. The scale, like any scale, is just a group of restricted tones that somebody decided to tag. Somebody said, Let's, we're going to call this melodic minor, and here we go. And in classical harmony, it's had rules. I, I remember you have to go up in melodic and come back in harmonic, on and on and on. But melodic minor has been around for hundreds of years, but improvisation on guitar has not barely 70, 80 years of, and I mean serious improv. Don't write me, don't say I know about this guitar player in 1910 who actually used, <laughs> please. Uh, you get my drift. And so uh, I'm gonna show you exactly what I ran into and what every guitar player has run into in their lifetime as they start to progress and learn melodic minor. So let's start with the two chord. The two chord in minor, that whole chord stack of seven notes is, is called minor 11, flat five, raise five. That includes all seven notes of melodic minor scale. But here's the rub, my friends. Here's E minor, seven flat five. Well, that chord comes from melodic minor, but it does from a melodic minor, a minor third up. So that may be hitting you right away if you're not familiar with this at all. 
yes, we have, we see a chord that we're supposed to improvise over, and now we don't think of the scale from the root, we're thinking of it from another note. When I was learning melodic minor, I knew just a few shapes, and they all started from the root. And so I found myself doing what I call now, and many of my friends and other teachers we call chasing roots. So here's E minor seven flat five. Where's that G on the E string or the A string? Right? And that's what I was doing, and that's what my friends were doing, and that's what some great players were doing that I knew. So I didn't want to do that. That did, that did not work for me at any level. But I'm going to take it a step farther. The, another chord now. This is a dominant chord. It's called 13 sharp 11. Well, that comes from melodic minor as well. Only you have to think up a fifth. Great. <laughs> that's just that's just perfect. Okay. And then I remember I said there's two different dominant chords. Here's another one. This is called uh, altered dominant is one way to look at it. Okay. If you're in, if you know the Grove chord families, this is chord family eight. But altered dominant means all the alterations. Flat nine, raise nine, flat five, raise five. Okay. Can we play something off its root? No, sorry. We think up a half step and then play. Wow. That's what I thought. I'm in my late teens, early 20s, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having fun with this at all. And I, what I started to recognize is some players went into arpeggio city when they see these chords and so they saw the interior chord types there's e minor seven flat five uh g minor major seven uh b flat major seven raise five right and so and it sounds cool you can't lose But it's a one-trick pony, and that's all there is to it. That's all I'm going to say about it. You can make up your mind. It's like something I would do maybe one time if I was going to solo three times over a tune, you know, three times over the progression. I may say, hey, one of my restrictions is going to be, be arpeggiating. But I, no, man, I want to know the scale sources. And I want to know how to get to them fast. So when we go back to this idea of we play the chord and then we think of another note, that's called a transposition. And there's a transposition for all three of those chords. And I just said, I want out of that puppy as quickly as possible. I'm fine with doing arpeggios to some extent, but I want to be able to play a scale just like I would in, in any other context. And, and I don't mean playing scalarly. I just mean I want access to all seven notes so I can create uh, phrases that aren't just sounding like an arpeggio. So I heard about a scale called Lydian Dominant. And it, and it says everything just in its name. If we take uh, the major scale, your C major, Lydian means raise the four all the time. Sharp four is sharp 11, always for the rest of your life. Lydian means that. Dominant means flat seven, always forever, okay? So I raise the four, flat the 11, I mean flat the seven, sorry. There you go. What is that scale? It's melodic minor starting in another note. 
Now, call it a mode if you want. Like I said, melodic minor is just something that somebody came up with and gave it a, a name. Well, when I also said, hey, you know, it's good to be open and to try to come at things from a different point of view, if there's ever a time to do it, it's going to be right here with this scale. I haven't used melodic minor for 40 years. The only reason I say its name is to try to show people this option. So you can take it and do with it as you will and say, uh, yes, I see the benefits of it as opposed to all these transpositions. So let's talk about the first chord here that I, I would like to show you. Remember I brought up this chord. This is C13 sharp 11. C13 means it's dominant already. And sharp 11 means Lydian. What's the scale I'm going to use over this chord? Starting from its root. Lydian dominant. It says it in the scale source, right there. Okay, so why would I ever, ever, ever consider using melodic minor, or I mean thinking in those terms? It's the same notes, period. Okay, so now there's two other chords to talk about. And please understand, I'm doing this quickly and trying to get a point across in a very limited amount of time. You have to work on this and we're going to have all kinds of great ways to show you and exercises to get you to the point that uh, I feel like I am. I can tell you I own this scale from the way I'm approaching it in 12 keys, like insanely well. I can play anywhere on the neck in 12 keys melodic minor, which I think of as Lydian dominant. It's all the same thing, except I don't have what I'm going to call out loud the stupid transpositions, okay? So 13, sharp 11, there's the scale <laughs> that has the chord type in its name, Lydian dominant. So when I was uh, younger, I was fortunate to, to learn from one of the great chord melody players of all time, and... Uh, he would, every time I would go to him, for some reason, he would always get into this idea of reminding me that minor seven flat five is the upper extension of a dominant ninth chord. Okay? And I, I eventually understood why he was bringing it up over and over again. I learned all its inversions and... Uh, what that does is it gives you creative possibilities that you don't have when you're just doing this. And so whenever somebody would say, hey, we're going to play a ninth chord, I had access to all these great little shapes. So when I see minor seven flat five or any variations of that chord stack, Minor 9 flat 5, minor 11 flat, flat 5, that's all the same chord to me. C13 sharp 11. Now, I know that might be just going over people's head, and I'm sorry, but that's the only way to talk about it. What I'm saying is this chord and this chord are the same chords. You, They come from the same scale. They use the same notes. They just have a different bass. So some of you may say, well, isn't that a transposition? At, the, at first it was, but really, I, since I was already looking at this as another chord anyways, it's not a reach. So anytime I see that, that chord type, I have instant access to it anywhere and I think that's the hugest thing on guitar that I could ever bring across to any student. Okay? 
the next chord, the last chord involved in this idea. Here's F sharp seven, raise nine, raise five, flat nine, flat five. Well, listen, folks, if I put a C in the bass, what does that look like? That's C13. This chord and this chord are the same chord as well and use the same scale. Well, this is called a flat five sub. And you'll hear it with bass, you know. Right? So, just took a little more time. But now I never look at an altered chord type and not think of it as this chord. It's all the same chord with different roots. That's all there is to it. So there's no more of this absolute total nonsense of thinking of a scale from another, uh, you know, from another tone. It's all the same chord and it uses Lydian dominant as its scale source. Now, that is incredible to me and has been to my students over 40 years saying, oh, OMG, this is awesome. But there's something more. And, and it's, it's even, it's almost even better. I use the major pentatonic scale as a frame to see the major scale. I add the active tones, the two tones missing from the major scale, to color at will. You know? I have no reason to think seven note scales really at all. I think of everything as active tones that I decide because my ear wants to use it or not. And we know that when we play major seven, for instance, here's C major seven, would you ever sit on the note C up an octave here as, as a resting tone? Right, that's called a flat nine interval. And it's, you can find it throughout diatonic harmony. And we avoid them like, a, like the plague. It's terrible. So we're not really playing seven note scales anyways, unless you're doing this. And I'm, of course, I'm exaggerating. We can use a scale, but as we use certain tones as passing tones because they can't be resting tones. There's my thing on the frame. I use the five shapes of major pentatonic as a frame for the major scale. Well, listen, my friends, dominant pentatonic is my frame for uh, Lydian dominant. So uh, here's uh, F sharp seven. So if you own the shapes of dominant pentatonic, which you most certainly should, it's so useful in everything from hardcore country to bebop. Uh, and I've heard just some of the greatest players um, in, in rock and fusion use that shape over all kinds of things. Uh, it's amazing. It's such a great and versatile shape. Um, so I use that. I say, okay, here's F sharp altered, F sharp seven altered. And now I see my five shapes. And for those of you who know what a, you know, I'm sort of a, a fanatic about sequences. Uh, 
Let's see. Oh, sorry. There's another aspect that two dominant pentatonic scales a whole step apart equal Lydian dominant slash melodic minor. So you not only end up with a frame, but you end up with a a pentatonic shape that you can use to play over chord types. And, and so you're killing, for lack of a better ex, you know, expression, 10 birds with one stone. So we get rid of the transpositions of melodic minor, and we end up with a shape of, of pentatonic that's so incredibly useful um, we, I should make a list of all the in, incredible guitar players that they may not call it dominant pentatonic, but they use the shape all, all the time in everything. So I'm just giving you a name for it. So you have a way to see all five shapes, just like we see major pentatonic. We change one note. There we are, we're done. So this takes, this is a rabbit hole and it takes some ex exploration. I'm just gonna finish this off by saying, here's your option. Three isolated chord types that all start from a different note or three chords that are all the same chord that start from the root. That also give you the option of two pentatonic shapes. <laughs> so you'll have to make the choice. across there uh, I could spend you know really a couple of hours just getting into one idea but I would suggest you get a piece of paper out write that G melodic minor scale and then build your E minor 11 flat 5 chord your F sharp altered chord your C 13 sharp 11 chord and you'll see all three of those chords just come from the same scale and that they really are the same chord. And then, instead of melodic minor, start a fifth down, and there's our, our good, good friend, Lydian Dominant. All right, my friends, I hope that helps you. Have fun with it, because it is fun. It's so fun to work on.